my name's Alison and I work for Historic England. I work in the Heritage at Risk team based in the South East office in Guildford. Um, in this presentation, I shall give a very brief introduction to scheduled monuments at risk and the role of Historic England in reducing those risks to scheduled monuments. I'll identify the main risks to the scheduled archaeology and outline how we work in partnership to help reduce these risks. Look in more detail at recent partnership working to reduce risk to scheduled monuments in the South Downs National Park. And along the way, hopefully I shall consider some of the challenges for monitoring and reducing risks for scheduled monuments. So one of the primary aims of the um, Historic England Corporate Plan, which ran from, or runs from 2017 to 2020, is protecting places through heritage at risk, uh, giving grants and advice, thereby reducing risk to her heritage assets. So in order to achieve this aim, we're working to better understand the nature and the extent of that risk. We encourage others to save and reuse this heritage at risk. We build the capacity of the sector and to deliver solutions for heritage at risk, and we provide advice and grants to help remove sites from the scheduled monument at uh, the Heritage at Risk Register. And we have a dedicated nine teams um, in our nine regional offices who um, are tasked with achieving this aim. Uh, there are around 20,000 scheduled monuments listed on the National Heritage List for England because of their national importance. And these include everything from single archaeological sites to uh, very complex archaeological landscapes. Scheduled monuments are placed onto a national register known as the Heritage at Risk Register based upon an assessment of risk, which is usually undertaken by Historic England staff. Um, for scheduled monuments, we have a, an archaeological risk assessment which covers scheduled earthworks and below ground remains. So we um, determine the scheduled monument to be an archaeological scheduled monument to be below ground archaeology as opposed to a standing remains scheduled monument which has a building risk assessment. So for the purposes of today, I'm talking about archaeology. So it's earthworks and below ground remains only, not the standing buildings scheduled monuments. Just to clarify that. The risk assessment is based on their condition and vulnerability, the trend in their condition, and their likely future vulnerability. The site's condition is expressed in, expressed in terms of the scale and severity of adverse effects on it, ranging from extensive significant problems to minor localised problems. Archaeology is removed from the register, or can be removed from the register, once sufficient progress has been made to address the identified risks and a significant reduction in that level of risk has been demonstrated. The, HAR the Heritage at Risk Register, I refer to it as the HAR Register, sorry. Heritage at Risk Register helps us to understand what factors lead to the heritage assets becoming at risk in the first place, what action is most likely to influence their condition, and where our resources can be focused to best effect. So just a bit of the principal risks um, to archaeology. Uh, <coughs> here. Naturally, there's many, many more than that, but these are just the principal ones nationally which come up. Um, through searching through a database. Uh, although protected by law, scheduled monuments are still at risk from a wide range of processes and intense pressures outside the planning system. Risks from include, from include damage from cultivation, forestry, and often most seriously of all, wholly natural processes such as scrub growth, animal burrowing, and coastal erosion. A uh, large majority of the, 20, uh, the circa 20,000 scheduled monuments in England are on land classified as agricultural. Loss and damage as a consequence of arable cultivation remains the greatest source of risk to scheduled monuments on the register, affecting 38% of archaeological entries on it, and in the southeast that rises to 58.5%. Effective information sharing with Natural England and DEFRA is therefore of great importance for us in prioritising management action and for targeting agri-environment schemes to best effect. This has been especially important under the Countryside Stewardship Scheme, where our advice has resulted in the removal of 801 scheduled monuments from the register since, its, uh, since 2009, which is when it became the Hart Register. The conservation of scheduled monuments in cultivation projects, known locally as COSMIC, has also provided a management tool for reducing risks to site in cult sites in cultivation. It has provided an updated risk assessment for all sites affected by arable cultivation that are listed on the HAR register. It provides bespoke recommendations for each monument, enabling cultivation to continue where it does not present a risk. 
It's also an important tool for advising owners on the long-term management of their monuments um, as, the, as their existing environmental or countryside stewardship agreements gradually expire. One more piece, sorry. The other principal threat which I'd like to pick up on is scrub and bracken. Analysis of the entries on the register show that tree scrub and bracken growth remain one of the most widespread causes of long-term damage to urban and rural archaeological sites. In most cases, simple and low cost but regular maintenance is the key to reducing the risks from these agents. The delivery of this though will always be reliant upon the help and goodwill of landowners, but for those sites listed on the Heritage at Risk Register, this may also involve a complex web of permission and consent and involve a variety of stakeholders, agencies and organisations, and not to mention some funding. So hopefully that's given you a bit of a background as to the settings to where we move forward from. So I'd like to now share some examples of some uh, projects and initiatives that we're working on in partnership to help find solutions for reducing risks to those scheduled monuments which fall within a protected landscape. Finding solutions for heritage at risk requires working in close partnership with owners, funders and a wide variety of organisations and stakeholders. Understanding the risks to scheduled monuments, building capacity to deliver solutions and reducing the risks through project work are just some of the ways in which we approach this. And as time is limited, I'm going to confine my examples to recent work within the South Downs National Park. So understanding the nature and extent of risk to scheduled monuments is the starting point to being able to prioritise and target resources to reducing those risks. In the South Downs National Park, there are 575 scheduled monuments. 36 of these are listed on the Heritage at Risk Register and 97 have a risk assessment of being in a vulnerable and declining condition. This means that 23% of the scheduled monuments in the National Park, that's 133 sites, have a risk assessment that in essence means they are likely to be in need of positive management. In addition to this, 96 of the 97 that have been assessed as being vulnerable and in decline have not had their condition assessed uh, formally since before 2010. <coughs> with this in mind, in 2016, in partnership with the cultural lead of the South Downs National Park, Nicola Bannister, I'm sure Nicola's here today, and the South Downs National Park's lead rangers, we agreed a project for the rangers to undertake a rapid condition assessment of the 133 scheduled monuments assessed at being either at risk or vulnerable and declining. It was intended that this would give us data on which to base a future management programme on. It was important that the project methodology should allow this to be undertaken as part of the Rangers' day-to-day -day work and not require additional resources, because none of our organisations have additional resources necessarily to put into additional projects. So the methodology acknowledged that the Rangers have, their, have expert knowledge of their own landscapes and in many cases are already aware of the condition of the scheduled monuments in their localities thereby the rapid condition assessment would be undertaken alongside the day job and as and when possible. The methodology also provided for a streamlined recording format in which scheduled monument data was pre-populated into a Word doc for ease of use. Providing a structured mechanism for recording and reporting on condition was key to the success of this project. At the start of the project, Historic England, myself, provided classroom training for the rangers in understanding risks to scheduled monuments and this training was later bolstered by a later session delivered in the field and in partnership with a local authority archaeologist from Chichester District Council. The rapid field assessment was completed over spring, summer and autumn last year and the results are now being drawn together into a database format by myself. Although the analysis of the results is ongoing, the initial results indicate that many of the scheduled monuments assessed as being in vulnerable condition remain, either remain in decline or have further deteriorated and may therefore be potential candidates for listing on the Heritage at Risk Register. This updated information will now enable both our organisations, that's the National Park and Historic England, and other partners to work together to find solutions to, redu to reduce the risks to these assets. This might include targeting funding and resources to those sites identified as being most in need, and developing a plan for work on, on those monuments as a response to this assessment. I'm pleased to report that this already appears to be happening and works have recently taken place to reduce risks to the scheduled monuments at Lavington Barrows near Midhurst in West 
in West Sussex. Um, this this uh, barrow was identified in the rapid assessment as requiring works to remove trees and rhododendron across it. Falls into two ownerships, National Trust and Malekan Field Estate. In liaison with Historic England and the estate owner, the monument has recently been cleared of trees and rhododendron under the National under the National Park Rangers targeted work programme. So it was specifically moved to this barrow because of the assessment that was undertaken. This work has reduced the risk to this monument and a new risk assessment will now be made by Historic England and our records adjusted accordingly. At the same time, a, a countryside stewardship consultation has been received from the Leckenfield Estate and a higher tier application for a start date in 2019. And liaison between myself and Natural England has established the future works to maintain the barrow clear of trees and scrub can be, it is, can be included under the, the new countryside stewardship scheme and I've Historic England's prescribed management options in response to this. This highlights how a multi-agency approach to manage can achieve real results for scheduled monuments at risk. The rapid assessment exercise highlighted the poor condition of the monument and this has then been ad addressed, initially through the South Downs Rangers work and then on th through, through ongoing management through Countryside Stewardship and Natural England. The rapid assessment data has also been used for other Countryside Stewardship applications and this has also led to illuminating new solutions to management issues. This is the cross dyke at Glatting Beacon, which is in um, West Sussex. Um, this monument hadn't been formally visited since before 2010, so we were unaware of the risks. And the, the Rangers Rapid Condition Assessment flagged this up um, as one that needed particular attention. It's in dual ownership, again, 50 50 split, um, with the uh, site on the right being in National Trust ownership, and what you can see at the left there is in. Uh, private ownership. Um, I'm just <coughs> so the management solution here, so with the information called from the, the Rangers assessment, I was able to prioritise this in my work schedule and in January this year contacted the owner to discuss the management required to reduce the risks. Uh, I made this visit with Natural England in February and we were able to put forward a strong case for this monument to be managed to clear of scrub and trees under countryside stewardship in 2019. The initial clearance of trees and scrub has now taken place. Uh, we've still got a long way, long way to go, but at least it's, it's starting. And uh, it's also important that once the trees are clear from the monument, we, ne we have to have sustainable management to keep them off. And we've negotiated with the National Trust, who are on the other side, who are now, once the site is clear of trees, will, main will manage this monument on behalf of the private owner as in its entirety. Glatting is a good example showing how working in multiple partnership with the South Downs National Park, the National Trust, the private owner and Natural England, a sustainable solution to reducing the risks to this monument has been found. Uh, so it's clear from the example of Glatting Beacon, therefore, that a partnership approach to monument monitoring and management has many benefits for all involved. Not least, it's highlighted the possibility to be able to synergise workflows between partners to good effect. With this in mind, we're continuing to work with the uh, South Downs National Park and the National Trust to help to develop a partnership approach to building capacity to deliver solutions for reducing risk in the park. Establishing a sustainable programme for risk monitoring and reporting, improving communication between partners, sharing risk information and cross-training for risk management are areas that we are currently discussing. I also work closely with other partners in the South East to deliver solutions to reduce risks and we, I delivered last year training to um, Natural England advisors for countryside stewardship and to uh, wildlife rangers in natural nature reserves on reducing risks to monuments on their reserves. This, high, this training highlighted the need for a strategic approach to management of these monuments that fall under multiple ownerships or with multiple stakeholders. And they're often a complex, complex to manage coherently and require varying solutions for management. Being able to work upstream and to take an overview of the management for the whole monument a, at an early stage is the way in which I feel positive <coughs> progress can be made. Well, probably haven't got time for the last example, so we've we played this one. This is another countryside stewardship example where working upstream with Natural England advisor in advance, we were able to identify that this monument under multiple ownerships, both the owners were due to come into countryside stewardship next year. So we were able to um, liaise well ahead and get both owners to 
discuss the management together at the same time through countryside stewardship, which and it's working very much upstream, but it's so helpful, especially on a linear monument like the Cross Dyke. Yeah, so I think that's my there we are, final slide from here. So I um, just wanted to say, I hope that through, through this presentation I've given you a flavour um, as to how Historic England work to, <laughs> to reduce risk to schedule monuments in protected areas. Poor, that was a... <laughs>